Thank you, Chair. Uh, both before and since I was elected Mayor, I've been campaigning and leading by example to improve life for London's private renters. Despite having no statutory powers in this area, I've created the UK's first public database of rogue landlord activity to help keep renters safe, and it's been checked more than 60,000 times already. We've successfully convinced the government to ban rip-off fees for renters, which will come into effect next year. We've ensured 100,000 Londoners have access to interest-free tenancy deposit loans, reducing the cost of moving home, and I'm supporting fuel-poor tenants in the private rented sector through the Fuel Poverty Support Fund and the Warmer Homes Programme, providing advice, insulation and boiler replacements to help make their homes warmer, healthier and cheaper to run. And I'm setting out a radical agenda for future reform with my London model, while the government dodges the tough questions. But the truth is that the government have dragged their feet when it comes to renting. They've been slow in agreeing to consider any changes at all, half-hearted in taking them forward, and implacably opposed to the kind of radical change renters uh, need. Two weeks ago, at uh, our first meeting since he took the job, I pressed the Secretary of State, James Brokenshire, to devolve landlord licensing powers to City Hall. Yet after two years of campaigning for this power and pushing ministers to act, government is still refusing to commit to this simple change to help improve renters' lives. Crucially, despite announcing to create fanfare a consultation on three-year tenancies for renters, ministers already appear to be wavering on their commitment to any real change in this area. I'll keep pushing ministers on longer tenancies, as I believe making them open-ended and scrapping no-fault evictions is essential to strengthening the rights of renters. And these, feature, uh, these features form the basis of my London model, a blueprint for tenancy reform that we're developing and that we'll be urging the government to support. As my housing strategy makes clear, although I have no power to control rents, once the London model is complete, we will consider what rent stabilisation or rent control measures might involve and how they could work for London. It makes sense to do this in the context of the completed London model, as no system of rent control can be implemented without first addressing the fundamental lack of security of tenure in the private rented sector. Um, and my team and I will keep working and campaigning to improve renters' lives, but the key barrier is that this government has been incapable of the kind of radical change renters need. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, can I just say how pleased I am you're supporting the campaign to end Section 21 no-fault evictions um, and that we do at last have a draft of your London model, which was published um, as a draft alongside your response to the government consultation on longer tenancies. Um, it has lots of detail and it goes further than their plans, which is good. Um, but it sadly only says, as you set out there just now, that you'll only consider um, what, you, what measures might limit unacceptable rent increases once the new London model is complete and in response to a mayor's question it seems like that will not happen even in consultation until after Christmas. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm worried, I, I'm worried that this is further putting off action to really push the government on rent. I know that uh, since very early on your line has been quite defeatist in giving up on getting more powers. Um, but surveys show rent controls are overwhelmingly popular with the public and even more so amongst older people compared with younger people, which is a really interesting finding. So I wanted to ask about um, just some facts about your activity um, in working for new powers. Um, and first about your uh, meetings with ministers. And just to be clear, I'm just asking for some information to be sent to me. Um, can I get a list of ministers which have changed quite a lot, um, but a list of the ministers you've met, the meetings you've had, on those date, on which dates, and whether rent control powers were discussed at each of those meetings, just so that we can see how you've pressed them on this. Chair, I'm happy to provide the cinema with, with uh, details of meetings, both uh, James Murray, the Deputy Mayor for Housing, City Hall officials and myself have had with uh, government ministers and uh, officials, but I think it's very important to address a, a key point in the cinema question, which sort of gave away what this is about. It's not about bringing about change, it's about doing things that simply for the sake of them being popular amongst some Londoners. Important though populist policies are, we've got to make sure we can bring about change. What I've sorted over the last two years is of course uh, be critical of government policies when they deserve criticism, but try and work with the government to bring about changes in this area. The re reality is any politician being honest with Londoners will explain to them that it's not the gift of the Mayor or the Assembly to bring about rent control or rent stabilisation. We need to make sure we, we work with the government to get these powers devolved. So my answer deliberately, I've talked about some of the other areas we're working with the government to make progress on. Some examples where we've made Thank progress, you, Mr. Mayor, some areas we've made uh, less progress. Thank you, Mr Mayor, for that information. Um, I, mean, I think you do, you do hit the nail on the head 
a little bit there. I mean, what I'm proposing that you do is more or less what I'm doing with you, and I've continued to do um, since we were both elected. It's been three years since I brought um, this up with you first. Um, in 2015, when we were both not even selected to stand for the jobs that we have, I, I pressed you when you were an MP yeah. to help mm -hmm. amend the Cities and Devolution Bill, and I'll just, I will just keep going on at you well, about this, and I want you to do the sure. same with the government, because that's how we get change. If I can point out to you that... Sure, it's always difficult when the question is longer than the answer. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the, I the, point is this, the, the point is this, Chair, look, it simply can't be right that whenever I do something that's popular, the Green Party claim credit for it, <laughs> uh, as them being the only person who have the... I think you're the not the only person who's experienced that. Can I, um, uh, can I point it's, out, It's Mr. a particular Mayor, skill um, the Greens have, Chair. Yeah, so uh, Mr Mayor, can I just, uh, on my time that I have, um, can I just point out to you that in October 2016, we first discussed this in this chamber, and at the same time as saying that you weren't going to get rent control powers, you also said the government is not going to ban tenancy fees, and yet we kept up the pressure on that, and yet they did that, and I think the well, thing I think here, Chair, you see the, the pressure, Green like Party claiming credit, not simply for the mayor's uh, policies, but the government's policies as well, yeah. uh, uh, which is another example of uh, don't believe everything you see on a green leaflet, let alone a tweet. Yeah. This is getting very political, and I'm out of time, I'm afraid. Thank you. Yes. And that was a very good note for you to end on.